Well, you guys wanted it, so here we are. There's not a whole lot to preface here. I'll be reviewing four object shows in one. These are shows that I have thoughts on, but not enough to take up an entire video on each show. Which is why I'll be mashing them all together into one video. This is more of an experiment than anything, but I'm actually really interested in focusing on multiple different subjects instead of one big subject. So let's get right into it. BFDI, the OG of the object shows. Such a special little series. The show had such an adorable magic to it. The premise was a silly little idea that Carrie and Michael just had fun with. And that's what made the show feel so special. They just had some silly fun with it. They didn't have to take it too seriously because it didn't need to be taken seriously. Sure, it wasn't always great. It got annoying at times. It got unpolished, unfocused. But that's kind of what makes BFDI... BFDI. It's not perfect, but it does what it wants to do almost perfectly. But I say almost mainly because of the show's finale. To put it straight, I don't think this finale understood what made the show great. For those who don't fully remember it, here's a quick recap of it. After a surprisingly awkward final vote, Fiery ends up winning BFDI as well as Dream Island. He lets in all of the other contestants into the island except for Leafy because she didn't like the ferris wheel he made her. Like that's literally the only reason. He lets in Flower even though she's been nothing but an obnoxious murderer throughout the entire series. Oh, but Leafy didn't like getting burned to death in a ferris wheel of doom? How dare she? I know this was supposed to kind of be a joke, but it's presented so seriously, and it's a pivotal plot point in this finale. Fiery does not let Leafy into the island, and calls Leafy a terrible person because she didn't like how his ferris wheel killed her. And the episode just feels so unaware of how stupid this is. Anyway, Leafy becomes furious and ends up bribing announcer, the host of the show, into giving the island to her. The island gets taken away from Fiery, leaving many of the contestants in a confused upset. During this turmoil, a UFO comes out of nowhere and starts abducting some of the contestants. Bubbled in randomly and uncharacteristically snaps at Flavor, which causes her to start destroying all of the recovery centers. After a very annoying amount of time that's spent on Flower getting rid of everyone's ability to stay alive and no one doing anything about it, she then kills Bubble permanently and it's never brought up in the episode ever again. The UFO crash lands onto her, ending her merciless torment of the contestants and my brain's frontal lobe, and then a bunch of other announcers come out of the destroyed UFO. They tell him how they're glad that he managed to recover the funds they lost during this campaign. They bring the host announcer onto the UFO, they somehow magically fix it instantly, and they fly away. But before your brain can recover from whatever just happened, Fiery says that he wants to apologize for what he did to Leafy because she really did didn't deserve it. Okay, it's cool that Fiery actually noticed how stupid he was being, but literally nothing made him come to this realization. If you're gonna have a character do something so out of left field for little to no reason, at least come up with the reason for why they changed their minds. Because otherwise, it just makes their stupid action even more stupid and pointless. But anyway, the contestants find out that Leafy was the one that stole Dream Island and they set up an execution for her. Good god, this got very dark all of a sudden. But right before she's about to get crushed, Fiery swoops in and saves her. He tells her that he realized that what he wanted most wasn't Dream Island, it was Leafy's friendship. He's been tired of all of the conflicts and turmoil that's been going on in the show, and he would rather spend his time with Leafy whether it's on Dream Island or not. Okay, cool. What? Just... What? God, I have enough questions to fill a novel. Why would no one stop Flower from committing literal murder by destroying all of the recovery centers? And how come everyone's helpless when this is going on, but when Leafy is found to have stolen Dream Island, that is when they decide to retaliate? Why would the announcers abduct four random contestants? They didn't even do anything with them in the end. Why is the last line of dialogue before the credits golf ball saying, Hurry up, we have to get back to the execution. It's such a weird line to have followed by the words, the end. After the, <laughs> emotional moment Fiery and Leafy shared, it's juxtaposed so awkwardly with this completely unrelated line. I'm sounding very disorganized right now, but I really can't help myself. The fact that I need to ask these questions shows how confused and rushed this ending was. And that's my problem with this finale. It felt rushed. It didn't feel a whole lot like Carrie and Michael had fun with it. It's like they felt the need to cram in as many plot twists and dramatic moments as they possibly could. I mean, in some moments they had some lighthearted humor, but at that point it just felt really out of place with all of the overly serious stuff. And so, with the unyielding determination to make this finale as intense as possible no matter how detrimental it was to the episode, it felt like they lost track of what made the show good in the first place. This finale tried to give 
give the show an emotionally climactic ending, but it's really hard to pull that off gracefully if your show was never building up to a climactic ending to begin with. When watching the show, there's never really a moment that feels like it's building up to something big. Which was okay, since that wasn't the point of the show, it just had a bunch of silliness and it worked. But for some reason, the finale really tried to give the show an epic final episode, but that goes against the entire point of the show lighthearted fun. And that's why, in my eyes, it just doesn't work. And it just sucks to see an otherwise really nice show get dragged down so much by such an awkwardly executed finale. But that just goes to show you how well the show worked. It didn't need to make anything overly dramatic. It was great just the way it was. Moving on to Object Lockdown. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. I think a big chunk of Object Lockdown sucked. The storyline was mostly an uncoordinated mess. So many characters were was just unbearable and the animation was just okay. The voice acting wasn't great either since Wuggle did not have a lot of variety in her voice when this show was made and she voiced like two thirds of the cast. Oh my god, I can sell the mansion. What's the price? I don't even want to do this challenge. Well, you do look old. Wow, you're so kind. I was also really not a fan of the show's self-deprecating and fourth wall breaking humor that started around episode three. Please, if you ever make a show, do not crudely insult your own show just for the sake of a joke. It's not helpful, it's not funny, and it does nothing to make it better. So yeah, I think the show started out really weak. I dislike nearly every aspect of it, but I seriously have to commend this show for its substantial improvement. Over the course of episodes 5 to 8, I think the show improved drastically. The voice acting became more expressive and differentiated. The story became more focused and enjoyable. The characters became more pleasant to watch. The animation became way more stylish and unique with its vibrant colors and distinct design. But I will admit that even then, I still don't think it was anything super great. My biggest problem with it mainly is the story. Because even though it's more focused in the first half of the season, it never felt like he was building up to anything big. Like, the events in the story kind of just happened and didn't feel very connected to each other. The story felt like it just kept going, you know? And it's perfectly fine to make a show that doesn't build up to anything incredibly momentous. Not every show needs to be like an anime insanity where nearly every event affects another and there's a bunch of character development and it's constantly building up to something huge. Sometimes it's nice to have a cute little story where the characters just do stuff and compete in challenges. It isn't really interesting to me personally, but I do see why so many people like it. And even though I still don't see it as anything amazing, I can appreciate it as a representation of Wuggle growing as a creator. This show exhibits her growth so nicely. Her show's development is a great depiction of her development as a creator. But I see why this series was cut short and rebooted into Object Lockout. Despite the serious improvement the original show went through, I definitely think it's better to have a show that's more consistent in its quality. And I think Object Lockout has a lot more going for it since it takes place in a way more creative setting and the story is a bit more interesting. Again, it's not very engaging for me. I still wish the show had a more connected story and the characters aren't quite as fleshed out as I would like them to be, but I think it holds a lot of potential and I'm still looking forward to reviewing it when the show finishes. And I'm sure that it'll eventually turn into something really great. Next up is Object Manor. This one isn't gonna take very long. I just wanted to quickly make it known that yes, I know that the Nightly Manor is a reboot of Object Manor and I've seen it. I I never bothered to mention it in any of my Nightly Manor videos because I never found it to be relevant. Object Manor is literally two episodes and there's really not much of it to discuss. I don't think this show is very good. The animation was pretty alright, but it looked very awkward and unstable at times. The voice acting wasn't too great, so many people felt really uninterested in their deliveries. And some of the lines themselves just sound so stupid when said out loud, so sometimes the bad voice acting and writing come together to create some true gems, such as... Looks like we're here. How did we get here so fast? We took the train. We were late for our train, but I mean, it's pretty fast. I'm back from the washroom. D wait, where is everyone? Well, looks like we should work together then. No way! I'm not going with someone like you. I'm going by myself. Thank you very much. Well, with that kind of attitude, I don't think you'll make it out of here alive. I mean, look at you. You don't even have arms. She, she had so much to live for. Whoever did this, they're... 
They're messed up. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no one talks like this. Moments like these really make it hard to take this show seriously. But even if these moments didn't exist, the story itself is just so boring to me. It moved so slowly and the shallow characters didn't do it any favors. And the story isn't even finished since the show was cut short at its second episode. So yeah, that's not doing it any favors either. Looking back on this show honestly just makes me all the more thankful that its successor managed to be way better in its execution. And finally, we have BFB. I refuse to call this show anything other than BFB because one, the meaning of the name changes halfway through the show so I don't know which one to choose and two, the second meaning of the show technically never ends and there's no way I'm calling the show battle for 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 BFB was an off the wall crazy show that just did whatever and that's what people loved about it. The zany energy that just kept on going resonated with a lot of people and while it's not my favorite, I definitely get the appeal. It's fun to see everyone mess around and spout out a bunch of oddball humor. And while I personally prefer more thought out comedy, I can see why so many people loved this series. And at first, I wasn't a fan of how the show had an insanely sized cast with a whopping 64 contestants. A character based show should have a relatively equal focus on each character, but such a gigantic cast lends itself to having a much lesser focus for each character. You'd think the show would definitely be hurt by that, but it's not nearly as much of a problem as I thought. Sure, the amount of screen time for each character is pretty uneven, but it somehow works well with the weirdness of BFB. The unpolished, wacky nature of the show is almost complemented by how the characters feel like they're all fighting for screen time in a way. And for a pretty quickly made show with episodes coming out about once a month, it's really not bad. This show has such a distinct atmosphere and it's made the show so memorable and beloved for its fans. That is, until the notorious split happened. Happened. In BFB 16, The Escape from 4, 40 contestants left the show to compete in a series called The Power of 2. This show was created because with the way BFB was moving, even with its fast episode output, with 64 contestants and only one getting eliminated each episode, the show would take around 5 years to finish. So it was evident that it was time for a change. Satomi Hanatsu, one of the writers for BFB, left the show to work on The Power of 2. And ever since, BFB seemed to change for the worse in many people's eyes. Satomi Hanatsu was a prominent writer for the show before the split, and once she was gone, I feel like the show started to lose its magic. The show wasn't terrible, but it seemed to have lost something. It's kind of hard to explain what exactly that was. I think a big part of it was the show's speed. The show before the split peppered in some gags here and there, but overall it just kept going and going. It kept the action up at all times. But post-split BFB seemed to spend more time on the characters talking and making longer jokes that sometimes felt forced or went on for too long, and they didn't work as well. Instead of everyone doing things, there's a lot of time spent on just talking about what they're gonna do, which is happened, what they're thinking about, and just overall striking friendly conversation that doesn't go anywhere. Some of the humor was still pretty similar to the pre-split's random oddball jokes, but these jokes felt like they either took too long to deliver, they wasted time, or they just didn't land. Instead of going and going, the show felt more like it was dragging and dragging. Plus, I feel like having a more condensed cast hurt the show more as it went on. While a smaller cast allows the show to have a stronger focus on each character, it also seemed to have made it harder to keep the show moving at a fast pace. Each character had longer amounts of screen time and it really slowed down the pacing. That's why the huge cast seemed to work so well before the split. The larger amount of characters complemented the breakneck speed the pre-split episodes moved at. More characters meant more things going on, which allowed the show to stay interesting. Now, not all of the post-split episodes were that bad, but the ones that were good seemed to be good for a different reason. Personally, I found lots of the episodes Samuel Thornbury wrote to be some of the best of the post-split episodes. But it wasn't because of its fast speed, it was more because I just personally found the gags to be more enjoyable. Sam's sense of humor apparently clicks with me more than Carrie's. Additionally, Sam's episodes seem to have had more things going on. Not quite at the same pace as pre-split BFB's episodes, but still at a better pace than lots of the post-split episodes. The challenges were taken advantage of by the characters in so many more diverse and interesting ways. The humor felt sharper, more endearing, and more thought out overall. That's why I think his episodes were so much better than most of the other post-split episodes.
and I'm really glad that he got the chance to write BFB's finale. It had a stellar blend of both lighthearted silliness and emotional seriousness. Despite how some scenes dragged on a bit too long and some moments felt padded out at times, it was still really enjoyable. And yet, even though it really was solid and well executed, it's still a bit nagging how it wasn't quite the same as the show used to be. It's hard to fully appreciate this finale while still being aware of how different the show was at first. But I still think that overall, BFB was definitely really good. It had its ups and downs, but it's truly an incredible representation of just silly amusement. Even at its lowest points, it was obvious that this show always had good intentions. It harkens back to the days of BFDI, where it was always just about Carrie and Michael having fun and doing whatever. And there we have it! I hope you found this video enjoyable, I definitely had a lot of fun with it. And I just want to take the time to quickly say that I'm so grateful for the incredible support I've been receiving recently. I've always appreciated all of the uplifting and supportive comments, they really do motivate me to make better videos. I'm so glad you guys have been enjoying what I've been putting out, and I'm really excited to grow more in the coming year. Thank you all so much once again, and here's to a happy new year!